Here's my German Shepherd named Goliath. We were playing ball when he landed on top of a broken bottle. We immediately wrapped up the wound to stop the excessive bleeding. But later we found him in the yard and he had ripped off his bandage and he was bleeding excessively again. So we rewrapped it and the bleeding stopped. And when my husband came home, he wanted to see how bad the wound was, so we unwrapped it again, and it looked like he had cut a major vein. So when we got the bleeding under control again, we rushed him to the veterinarian. The veterinarian had to use a soldering tool to burn his veins so that the bleeding would stop. The veterinarian told us that he had severed five veins and had also severed a major nerve in his paw. And they were talking about amputation. But the bleeding um, stopped finally, and they were able to sew his paw up, and they used eight stitches. After we got home from the veterinarian, Goliath, later that evening, had ripped out all of his stitches. So we brought him back in to get new stitches. Then his stitches just ripped away from his skin and they weren't holding anymore. And he had gotten an infection in his paw and it started to swell. Um, we brought him back to the veterinarian and they gave him some antibiotic shots. And they also gave him some aluminum spray. But there was no more stitches after that. There was nothing more they can do. So we started applying our own medicines. Here was the final result. After nothing had worked, the veterinarian and our treatment, he was left with a big hole in his paw. I had read that sugar therapy worked really well for animals and humans who had lost hope for healing their wounds. So I'm going to demonstrate here to you exactly how to heal your animal's wound with sugar. Here are the supplies you will need to have ready before you start. Towels. Toilet paper, scissors, dish soap, duct tape, gauze, um, have ready four liters of water, vinegar, sugar, mix sugar and water until it's thickened, Epsom salt, a sock, plastic bags. It's very important to keep the wound clean so wash it really, really well with dish soap and water. I added a few tablespoons of vinegar to a liter of water so that when I rinsed his wounds, it would cut the soap quicker. Then I took a large spoon of Epsom salt and added it to a liter of warm water and soaked his paw for about 5 to 10 minutes. Epsom salts relieve pain and are a great alternative to antibiotics. Finally, you're just going to need 1 liter of water for the final rinse. Next, you're going to need your towel so you can dry the wound. At this point, you need to check the wound to make sure that it is very, very clean before you put the sugar wraps on it. You have to make this um, sugar water solution before you get started. It's basically a lot, a lot of sugar into a little bit of water until it becomes thick like a syrup, almost like corn syrup. Okay, now it's time to apply the sugar directly to the wound. I would use a generous amount and I would pour as much sugar as I could fit into the wound. Next, you're going to take your gauze out of the corn syrup sugar solution that you made earlier. And you're going to wrap it around the sugar-packed wound. This will help keep the sugar from falling out of the wound. Next, you're going to wrap it with gauze. I had just run out of gauze, 
so I decided to use some old linens that I was no longer using. Next, you're going to need toilet paper. The sugar is going to draw a lot of water out of the wound to make it sterile. So you're going to need a generous amount of toilet paper when you're wrapping the wound. You can use duct tape or electric tape or any kind of medical tape. Now you'll need your scissors so you can cut the tape. Next, you're going to put the sock over the wound. Here's the part where you have to be a little careful when you're wrapping the sock around his wrist. Make sure it's tight, but not too tight. I just made sure that I could stick my finger in between the tape and his wrist and that seemed like it was loose enough to where the sock wouldn't slide off of his paw. After we had put the sugar wraps on him, I saw him wagging his tail for the first time in a long time. When you remove the sugar wraps, they're gonna be hard and crusty because they've been absorbing a lot of water over the past 24 hours. When we took a closer look at the wound the next day, we noticed the sugar was healing the wound. Every time we took the sugar wraps off the wound and took a close look to make sure there was no infection, we did notice a lot of tissue growth occurring every single day inside of the wound. We used a plastic bag around our dog's paw every time he had to go outside because whenever we didn't use the plastic bag, all of the toilet paper would get wet and it would disintegrate off of his paw. Here we are finally. We're unwrapping the sugar wraps for the last time. I think we only used the sugar wraps for about two weeks because the first week he was going to the veterinarian. The deep wound was finally healed and it was filled in with tissue. So that's why we decided to take the sugar wraps off. I suppose you're gonna have to use some discretion when you're deciding how long to use the sugar wrap. Next, I rinsed all the sugar off of his paw and then I dried it for the last time. Now the wounds must stay very, very dry so that a scab can develop. At this point in time, you could let your pet run around or live outside again. That's what we did. Stop. 
here's what the wound looked like three days after we took the sugar wraps off and as you can see it has completely scabbed over and the gaping wound is completely sealed up so here i am with goliath and we're playing ball just like we used to before the accident happened nearly four months ago I'm going to put a link in the description box to the video that I first saw that taught me how to make the sugar wraps and heal my dog's wound. I hope this video has been helpful to you and thanks for watching. Thank you.